You know, we're getting a lot of people that are very confused about marriage, how to get married, where to find the right girl, all that stuff. And I think the confusion um, has risen among the Muslims, especially young Muslims, is because they've been victims of westernization. Is that you look at uh, uh, you look at what the non-Muslims are doing, and you think that this is normal. You have normalized their sin and their way of living, and you have made the Islamic way of living and approach of to marriage uh, something that is abnormal, something that is an alien. Um, and so that's why a lot of the Muslims today they find it very weird that you cannot have a relationship before marriage. You know, when I say, uh, sometimes, you know, I ask, people ask me and they say, well, how do I get married? I, if I can't be with her, how can I marry her? I said, what are you talking about? This is haram. You can't, you can't just be with someone. This is a haram relationship. And they don't understand that concept. They say, no, I got to try her first. And she has to try me. And then we get married. And you see, um, and they talk about love. They say, well, how can I marry someone I don't love? It's very obvious that you've been you've been inflicted or you're a victim of romantic movies in Hollywood. You know, in Hollywood, there, oh, there's always this girl and the hero and, and you know, and, and they fall in love and then they get married. That's, no, that's wrong. That's, that's work. Life doesn't work like that. This is all fake. And that's why we see a lot of divorce rates when they do that approach that, you know, you have a relationship and we fall in love. And of course, many haram things happen along the line, along the way. And then they're like, oh, let's get married. That doesn't work. And reality tells us, it's numbers, statistics. They tell us this is very obvious that this approach doesn't work to life. So what works? What works is that when you, as a Muslim man, you approach a girl, whether you see her on, in university, maybe at work, or maybe you know her through family, friends, whatever. You know her, a very, uh, not a personal knowing, not a personal relationship, but you know about her and you have seen her maybe once, twice, and you know her family, good family, respectable people. So you've heard things, right? And you know her reputation is good. That's when you approach her with your family. With your family, you approach them in an official way, in a sitting, in a meeting. No shaitan. Shaitan got no room to play with your head now because the people are around you, right? So you sit down and, and you talk to her. That's what we call in Arabic another shar'iyah. Is that this is the religious uh, meeting with the girl. And this is halal. She sits down in front of you and she sees you and you see her. And uh, with her yani, hijab, but showing her face. If she's a niqabi, she has to show her face. Yeah, Some, uh, some ulama even they say she can even show her wrist, uh, a little bit of the hair. During that religious sitting. But and this is a ikhtilaf bin ulama. This is a disputed matter. But anyways, it's not about always the looks. You see her face, inshallah, she's you know, a person that that's appealing to you and you're appealing to her. And you sit down and you ask her questions and you talk to her. Talk to her. You, you like you, you know you like her, her thoughts, her mindset, whatever, and she likes your mindset and thoughts and all that. Alhamdulillah. Now you take it to the next step. What is it? That you do the aqd nikah or you do the engagement maybe. Now, when that's happening, suppose, يعني, no, I'm not ready, blah, blah, blah. You know, maybe I'm not sure. I need to sit down with her again. No problem. Sit down with her again, two times, three times, four times, five times. That's religiously, technically, that's fine. As long as there is mahram, the guardians are there. Yeah. So you do that and then you get to know her and then you get married. But this test driving nonsense that the, the non-Muslims are trying to impose on you and everybody else, this doesn't work, baby. This doesn't work. This, it's been tried. And before that, it's haram, aslan. You're transgressing. This is, this is outside of your uh, circle of, of, of halal things to do, you know? So this is how you get married. And then you ask about her. Ask your sister, your mom, the family. They ask about you. This guy is good. He prays. He doesn't pray. He doesn't have any crazy stuff. He's not a serial killer. You know, he doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. Whatever it is. Now you have built a profile. Now you know this person. Then you get married. Tell him, although this is as simple as it gets. 
and this is the most beautiful way and Allah will bless you with this marriage. And bef after marriage, what happens is that, important, you have to live this marriage, this relationship should be established on the basis of Sharia, of Quran and Sunnah, what Allah has ordered you both to do, not on what I think and what you think, then you're going to have problems because then there'll be disputes. Do this, don't do that, uh, uh, you know, uh, many things in life. Take it back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah rules between you both. Then you have a very good marriage, inshallah. If you both agree on this legislation that between you and I, the marriage is based on, on, on Islam. Now you don't have, inshallah, you won't have a lot of disputes that will reach, into, reach to, to divorce. Yeah? And always know in marriage, this is very important, guys. Marriage is not a democracy. Marriage, it needs one decision maker. The man is the guardian. He is the guardian. Yeah? But that doesn't mean he transgresses or it becomes unfair. No, it's obligatory for him to, to be fair as a guardian, as a leader. And it's obligatory on him to, be, to sacrifice more than the woman. Yeah? So you're the one who provides the, 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 you know, the money, the income, the, 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 the housing, all that stuff. And the woman should, be, should obey. Should obey in things that are halal. Not, disobey, not obey him in haram things. Yeah, this is how a marriage should be, just like a company. Have you ever seen a company with no CEO? It can't work. Or a company that has like more than one decision makers? It doesn't work. Even the board of directors, they say board of directors, is always the head. He decides everything. It's fine. We can discuss even marriage. Your wife can discuss with you, you know, influence your decision, says, no, I want this, I want that, whatever it is. But the final decision should be, should be from the man. He's the guardian. That's how you build a good family. If you agree on these vital principles of marriage, you're going to have a good marriage, inshallah. May Allah bless you, everyone. And may Allah uh, grant you happiness in your marriage and in life in general. Allah ta'ala.